Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Right. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, we will continue our lecture series. Uh, and last lecture, we saw this uh, the concept of calculus of variations, we extended that to uh, constant optimization problem as well, as well as we discussed about an example problem, which motivated that uh, this uh, concept of variational calculus can be used for optimal control very well directly rather. So, now we want to generalize this concept and then talk about uh, how do we formalize this optimal control uh, concepts coming from calculus of variation. Okay. So, we will try to use this yale equations again, but now it will be in the fully framework of optimal control theory again. I mean uh, we do not want to talk in a disguised way and things like that anymore. We will define an optimal control problem and then try to attempt to kind of solve this problem as it is actually. Okay. All right. So, what is the summary of variational problems in multiple dimension with constraints uh, that we that is what we are, we are looking for that is what we discussed in the just in the last class that we are we were interested in optimizing this kind of a cost function along with this uh, this uh, general equality constraint sort of thing, where x happened to be n dimension and phi happened to be n tilde dimension. And then we talked about this uh, Lagrange existing theorem and things like that and ultimately led us to this definition of uh, this L star ok. Again th this L star happens to be a function of lambda also. So, this uh, this L star can be defined like this and then we have this uh, EL equations ok and this EL equation happens to be something like this actually ok. So, you have n equations coming from there and uh, n tilde equation coming from there and then transversality conditions were like this ok. We discussed everything in the in the previous lecture some of you who, who do not recall probably can revise that actually. And then ultimately led up with this this kind of uh, EL equation with uh, with transversality conditions ok. So, this transversality condition depending on whether T f is fixed or T f is free, uh, we have these two class of different things and we discuss about that in the last class. So, ultimately, the point is key point is we have real equations, Euler Lagrange equation and there are transversality condition or boundary conditions like that actually. All right. Uh, so, now how do we use this these concepts for uh, this application of uh, these ideas for optimal control problems rather. So, what is the formal definition of optimal control that also we discussed in the last class a little bit towards end of the last class, but I mean to revise it again what you are looking for is to find an admissible control u t ok, which causes the system this x dot equal to f of x u t where initial condition is fixed ok to follow an admissible trajectory that optimizes the performance index on the on the way while satisfying the appropriate boundary conditions. So, these are the I mean features of a good optimal control problem definition. You, to, you need to have a state equations, system dynamics, you need to have initial conditions or rather final condition, initial condition together that means appropriate boundary condition. And as a designer, you should always try to construct a cost function that you want to minimize or maximize either way, okay, which will lead to the objective basically. Okay. So, these are the three components that is always essential for a, for a good optimal control problem formulation actually. Okay. Right. And also remember now if you look at this thing ok, this this constraint equation contain an x dot term ok x x dot z t equal 0. Whereas, this constraint equation what you are looking what you are talking here ok, I mean this cost function ok let me go back to cost function also there ok, cost function contain an x dot term also here. Now, this cost function what you are looking for here typically does not contain an x dot in most of the cases ok. But x dot is also required because x dot is comes as part of the state equation. Okay. By the way, it does not mean that you do not really need x dot all the time. I mean, you can have a problem where x dot is also there. Okay. And in especially this LQR class, linear quadratic regulator class, when we discuss that point of time, we will see that there is a class of problem for which you really need x dot in the cost function, in the cost function also. But in general, most of the time you do not need it, we it is sufficient to define in the form of x and u. Because once x and u is there, then x dot is constrained like anyway, like this. You don't have a freedom of uh, 
you, you do not have further freedom basically what I mean. Once you get x and u and the x initial condition is defined, then this x dot happens to be equal to that. Okay. So, you do not have too much freedom for minimizing maximizing of that, that quantity basically. So, that is the reason why you are not putting it here most of the time. All right. So, this is the problem definition there. Okay. So, how do you go and do that? Okay. Now, the problem here is this this particular term, I mean if you see this uh, this equation, okay, what we discussed in the as a calculus of, vari of variation setting, it does it did not contain any term outside the integral, okay. but suddenly you are talking a term which is outside the integral actually, okay. this term out, which is outside the integral, how do you handle that? Yeah. All right, so, one way to handle that is something like this, let us first consider this integral, okay. we will consider integral t naught to t f d by d t of this quantity okay. and this happens to be like that. Okay. Very, I mean this, uh, this function evaluated at final value minus evaluated at initial value. That means, this function what you are looking for this phi of t of x f small phi of t of x f that is what you are looking for. This can be interpreted as something with this one plus integral of this quantity. Okay. But, once you evaluate any function with a number okay, this particularly will give us a number basically. Okay. So, that means, that is irrelevant for optimization really. Okay. You are talking about this one plus something actually, okay, which is very, which is variable. Anything that is, a, that has some flexibility, we can do something for a minimizing or maximizing. Anything that is a number, we can do anything too much on that. So, that means, uh, what I mean is, this phi of x naught t naught is a constant value. So, instead of uh, trying to optimize this j, okay, it is equivalent to optimize j 1 ignoring this fellow. Okay. So, we will ignore that and then tell okay, now this is integral of that and that is the original thing is also integral of that. Okay. There is a term which is inside the integral and the outside that is, this is gone anyway, there is again there is integral term. So, I will combine these two. Okay. So, this what you are looking for here now is compatible to what you what you have seen before actually. right? This does not have anything outside. Okay. So, this is what you are trying, what the, this is the trick that we are following here actually in a way. So, instead of trying to uh, optimize the cost function j directly, which will, which is also possible. I mean, I'll, I'll uh, talk to you in a, in a few slides down the line. Actually, okay, that's another way of doing things. But uh, we'll consider in a one-to-one -one equivalent of what we already know, and how do we want to put it in that framework? Actually, okay. Then we, we do this algebra, and then tell, okay, this is just a constant value; it doesn't matter. So we'll ignore that, and then construct this j one, and then take both the terms inside the integral then it happens to be very compatible to what we already know basically. Okay. So, now we can use this, this calculus of variations ideas that we already know. What is that? Then obviously, we will uh, construct a j bar first and j bar is nothing but whatever we already have inside the integral plus lambda transpose this constraint equation remember f minus x dot equal to 0. Okay. We have this constraint equation right. So, f minus x dot will be equal to 0 and that constant equation should come here inside the integral actually. Okay. Now, the for the further algebra talks something like this, uh, whatever wherever you do not see any derivative term, you define that as something like Hamiltonian. Okay. This definition comes from open trace in ideas and all that that one. That history and all I will not talk here, but uh, it essentially comes from uh, his ideas basically. So, anyway before that people were all talking about E L equations and going directly there, but uh, this this particular concept of uh, simplifying things and all that was a great contribution from Fontaine actually. We will see some of his uh, other contribution in, in constraint optimal control lectures later actually. Okay. But anyway coming back this uh, Hamiltonian is defined as something like this all the terms without derivative terms. Okay. Then I can simplify J bar. Okay is something like this because L plus lambda transpose F is nothing but H. Now, I will uh, drop the arguments for uh, simplifying a simplicity of algebra. I know that which one can is a function of what. Uh, with that assumption, I will drop this argument okay, and then tell okay, this is first H and then the next term is d phi by dt. Then the next term is this, this quantity lambda transpose x dot. Okay. So, this is my quantity. So, this is nothing but my L star actually. Okay. So, j bar is uh, nothing but integration t 0 to t f L star d t, where L star is nothing but that. Yeah. Now, it is very, very compatible to what we know before actually. But, 
what is else to, I mean what is Hamiltonian and all remember Hamiltonian is a function of x u and lambda and else is also says a function of function of x u and lambda actually. So, we will we have to apply the EL equations thrice once with respect to x, once with respect to u and once with respect to lambda actually. All right, so we'll do that, and then this L star. I mean, just to summarize, L star is defined like this, where H is defined like that. Okay. H is L plus lambda transpose F, where L star is nothing but H plus d phi by dt minus lambda transpose X star. Now, what is the necessary condition? We have to apply these conditions thrice. Okay. And again, this the, the, this expression nowhere contains u dot and lambda dot, so these two quantities will go to zero. Okay. But we are not done yet because this algebra we have to cater for actually. Okay. So, what is the del L star by del x? Del L star by del x. So, that by definition is del by del x of L star and L star is nothing but this quantity. Right. So, we substitute this quantity here, okay, whatever L star is defined is here and then we carry out this algebra. So, first thing talks about del h by del x okay, plus del by del x of this quantity whatever you have here and d phi Okay, is nothing but del phi by del t plus phi is a function of x also basically, right? So del phi by del t plus del phi by del x transpose times x dot actually. So these two quantities comes from this quantity really, okay? And this quantity doesn't contain any any x or uh, I mean lambda. So the derivative of that with respect partial derivative of that with respect to x is zero basically. Right? So we left out it like that, okay? Then this is del h by del x plus this quantity del square phi by del x del t plus this quantity del phi del square phi by del x square into x dot. This is double derivative sort of thing actually. Okay. Now, what about the uh, other quantity? This is one quantity. What about the other quantity del l star by del x dot actually? Uh, this, this is the first quantity that we discussed. What is the second quantity? d by dt of del l star by del x dot. So, that is what d by dt of del l star by del x dot. Okay. Now, we have to go to this uh, this l star sort of thing okay. and okay. d by dt of that and d by dt of that is nothing but d by dt of del phi by del x minus lambda basically. Okay. All right, because uh, see it is very easy to see that uh, from uh, l star definition is something like this. Okay. So, you can think of this uh, the del phi by del t is something like this again I explained that here okay. del when you talk about d phi by dt sorry this d phi by dt is nothing but del phi by del t plus this term. So, that is where you get an additional x dot actually. Okay. So, you now when you talk about del l star by del x dot you are actually looking for this expression h is not a function of x dot. So, any any partial derivative with respect to that is not there, okay. but it will come from these two expressions. Okay. What is these two? One is del phi by del x the other one is lambda okay. that will come here and d by dt of that you have to take. So, del d by dt of that is nothing but again del by del t of that plus del by del x of that times x dot. Okay. Whenever see they remember the whenever you talk there are two things going on here one is the total derivative something like d phi by dt the other one is the partial derivative something like del phi by del t. So, whenever you have a d phi by dt then it the first is the partial derivative with respect to the free variable and then you have to account for the chain rule of derivative as well basically. Okay. Okay. So, that is how the algebra will proceed actually. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. So, this is uh, this is the this is what you are looking for here. Okay. So, d by dt of that it turns out to be like this actually. Okay. Remember because del, del phi del by del t of that one okay. plus del by del x of that into x dot okay. minus this uh, d by dt of lambda which is nothing but lambda dot. That term that because this this expression just look at this expression and whenever you have this uh, del l by del x actually we have to worry about that kind of thing. Anyway. So, this is the type of expression that you that I was talking about. Okay. So, do, do the algebra yourself then you will be the clarity will emerge actually okay. then ultimately you will end up with something like this. Okay. So, what is the EL equation? EL equation tells that this term minus this term has to be equal to 0. 
So, when I took this term minus this term obviously, these two will cancel out del, phi, del square phi by del x del t is, is there both the places it will cancel out and then you will be left out with other term that is what it is done here anyway. Okay. So, one term will cancel out the other term will, will tell us that del x by del x okay, from, from here okay, okay, or the other term will also cancel out okay, this these two terms okay, this is same as this actually. Okay. So, the, then we are left out with nothing but del x by del x plus lambda dot equal to 0. So, that means lambda dot is nothing but minus del x by del x actually and this particular equation is called coasted equation or, or adjoint equation really. Okay. Then the coming to the second part of the equation del L star by del u equal to 0 that is easy okay. that that will tell nowhere else the u appears u appears only in the in the definition of Hamiltonian. So, what you are telling is del h by del u has to be equal to 0 okay. and then del L star by del lambda will nothing but the boundary I mean boundary sorry this constant equation sort of thing. So, it will give us this thing like that del h by del lambda minus x dot equal to 0 that means x dot is nothing but del h by del lambda and when you talk about h is like that. So, what is del h by del lambda it is nothing but f. So, x dot equal to f of x u t that is nothing but your state equation. Okay. So, ultimately what you are looking for is uh, what you are lending up uh, I mean where we landed up is something like coasted equation and optimal control equation or is also called a stationary equation. Now, this is just an algebraic equation sort of thing okay. and then this is a cost uh, there is a state equation actually. Okay. So, this equation has to be sol solved together basically that way. So, this is the what is summary, summary is uh, you have to define Hamiltonian which is nothing but uh, L plus lambda transpose f and then carry out this algebra where one thing is x dot equal to f of x u state equation and then del s by del u equal to 0 optimal control equation. Once you solve this equation at every point of time u will be a function of x and lambda ultimately because Hamiltonian is a function of x u and lambda everything. So, if you solve this equation okay, for u then you, you get the optimal control, but for solving that as you remember u will be a function of x and lambda both and for that you need these two equations together basically. Okay. So, one, one part of the equation is called state equation the other part is called co-state equation. Okay. Okay, more on that I will talk in a, a one or two slides later actually. Okay. Now, what about boundary conditions? Okay. Boundary conditions are again we go back to that uh, the transversality condition and all we general transversality condition happens to be like that, but L star remember is something like this okay. this this is this is that where d phi by dt is nothing but del phi by del t plus del phi by del x into x dot sort of thing that way. So, you substitute this L star whatever wherever you see L star is something like this and then you get for variety of conditions this way that way and all you can you can derive many things actually. So, for example, when both T naught and X of T naught are assumed to be fixed then this uh, delta T naught and delta X naught the, those are 0 by default. So, we will end I mean we all that we have is delta X f and delta T f that the variation there actually. All right. Now, what you do is uh, you substitute these expressions del L star by del x dot and things like that you then you carry out this algebra a little bit more you can sell out some of these uh, other terms and end up with some expression like this actually. So, the what I mean is whenever this T naught and x of T naught are assumed to be fixed which is many of the times it is true then this is the boundary I mean transversality condition ultimately this simplifies to something like that in the in the form of Hamiltonian actually. And in addition to that many times people tell okay sometimes this is like delta x f is uh, 0 that means x f is fixed then this uh, the only this one you left out your delta t f is free that means Hamiltonian at the final time is nothing but minus of del phi by del t. Yeah. And similarly when t f is fixed but x f is free then this is 0 but because this is free this cannot be 0. So, you have lambda f equal to del phi by del x f this is what is extra is here if when T f is fixed X f is free you will end up with this equation this is what I just now described. Okay. So, that means lambda f will, will turn out to be del phi by del X f actually. When of the other on the other hand when T f is free but X f is fixed then H of T f will be minus del phi by del T evaluated at T f. Okay. And when both are free you will have both things necessary anyway if, you, if your X f is free and T f is also free then both these conditions will come into picture. 
But also remember how many conditions are those? Those can uh, phi is a scalar x is a vector. Okay, del phi by del uh, del phi by del x happens to be n. So that means you are getting n boundary conditions from here. How many differential equations you have here? It's also again n. H is a h is a scalar x is a vector. So lambda dot is of same dimension as x actually. So that means lambda is also same dimension of x. In in a way you can argue that way actually. So essentially, what is going on here? We have a, a problem, optimal control problem, and we have a bunch of differential equation, bunch of algebraic equation, bunch of boundary conditions, and things like that. And all of them have to be satisfied for for, for a meaningful solution, basically. Okay. Now, okay. Now, what about an alternate approach? We don't have to carry out all these longhand algebra and things like that, but In a simplistic sense, let us see whether we can arrive at the same solution or not. Actually, so the the performance index to be minimized happens to be like this: the same performance index that we started with. Path constraints are nothing but the state equation. Again, boundary conditions are there. X of t zero, x of x zero equal to x zero. I mean, the initial condition which is specified, and t f is fixed, and x of t f has to be free. Actually, yeah. Anyway, so this is what it is. Then the necessary conditions of uh, Optimality. What we do, we will not worry about this calculus of variation, E L equation, and all. We'll go back little further. I mean, little more uh, before that. Then, okay, we'll construct an augmented performance index, J bar, which is nothing but that. So L plus lambda transpose F minus X dot. So F mi remember X F minus X dot happens to act along the path. So I will take it inside the integral, which is path dependent cost actually. Okay. Very same thing as Lagrange idea. Okay, that uh, put it as J bar is something like this. Then directly define Hamiltonian like that. Hamiltonian is same Hamiltonian what we discussed. L plus lambda transpose f. Again. Now we are interested uh, not applying in uh, EL equation, but we'll consider first variation of J bar directly. Okay. When you do first variation of J bar, is nothing but first variation of phi plus first variation of this integral. And remember, very fundamental theorem of uh, calculus of variation that we discussed that time. That uh, variation of integral is integral of variation. Actually, okay. So we'll uh, we'll accept that actually here. So and then take this variation inside the integral. Okay. So then we talk about this uh, this algebra that variation of these terms are are can be expanded, and then you can write okay variation of this nothing but variation of Hamiltonian plus variation of these two multiplication quantities. That means variation of this and variation of that. Okay. okay. So essentially, the first variation del j bar happens to be like this. And now it look at the individual terms. Okay, del phi is nothing but del phi. What is del phi? Del phi can happen through variations of x f actually. Okay, so del phi is nothing but del f del x f transpose times del phi by del x f. I can write it that way. Similarly, del h I can write it that way. Del h is nothing but remember h is a function of x u and lambda. All the three quantities actually. Okay, so then variation of h can happen through variation of x. Through variation of u and through variation of lambda as well, so then this this essentially contains these three these three quantities. What about the next? Next is that. Okay, that one we'll consider in with integral term. So this with integral, this is what it is, and this is nothing but by definition, delta x dot is nothing but dy dt of delta x actually. This by definition of delta x dot. Okay. Or you can accept this uh, another calculus of the variation result. That variation of derivative is nothing but derivative of variation that we also discussed there actually. So variation of derivative is nothing but derivative of variation actually. Okay. Then it is we are ready for applying this uh, uh, this partial uh, what is this uh, integration by parts, and then this is nothing but this first one. Then the integration of the second one with respect to time is nothing but delta x minus. Derivative of first one into integral of the second one. Okay, so this is what it is. So ultimately, it leads to this uh, this expression of lambda f transpose delta x f. This expression evaluated at t f at delta x f, and minus this expression evaluated at t not delta x not. This is what it is. Minus uh, of uh, this uh, this quantity now can be interchanged. I mean because. It is something like x transpose y. When x x is a vector, y is a vector of the same dimension. Then x transpose y is nothing but y transpose x. Ultimately, it is nothing but x one y one plus x two y two plus x three y three like that. So you can exchange it and tell okay x transpose y is nothing but y transpose x actually. Okay. 
So, that is what is going on here actually okay. just for the I mean further simplicity we require this delta x term to the left hand side to be compatible with all these expressions that you have been doing. And if somebody can do other way around which is also true the delta of del phi by del x f transpose times delta x f like that actually then you do not need this algebra. But anyway we have been doing in the left hand side the variations first. So, we will be compatible with that actually okay. just to do that it is put that way. Okay. Okay, and one second. The small mistake again here. This transpose is not required. Okay, this this transpose is also not required. Okay, because it is x transpose y is nothing but y transpose x. So this is x transpose y is nothing but y transpose x actually. So that's nothing but lambda dot. The transpose will not be there. Obviously, the multiplication has to be a scalar that, that, that also needs to be looked at actually. Anyway, so this is what it is. So, this this integral it happens to be something like this. Okay. So, we will put them together and tell okay, this first variations all the quantities that we know this is first variation of phi. So, let it be there and then first variation of all these other quantities lambda I mean Hamiltonian with these three terms and then the other quantities are put like this actually. Remember this this term will go to this this term outside the integral basically so, that is how it is done. So, what you are looking for the first variation if you collect all the terms and try to put it together the first variation del j bar happens to be something like this delta x f transpose times this plus integral of the, all this and then plus integral of that actually. So, again this leads to that we have to assure that the first variation happens to be 0 and it happens to be 0 for all possible variations of this uh, this x uh, I mean x u lambda delta x f everything actually that means the coefficient needs to be 0 ok. So, this coefficient needs to be 0 this is the this is this is the fundamental theorem that we discussed in the calculus variation class also ok. If it for all variation that one function is not 0 then the other coefficient has to be 0 in the interval and all that actually that, that theorem we can we can revise also if necessary. So, what you do is all the coefficients happen to be 0. So, the coefficient means whatever this whatever results from here we will see that in a second actually. So, what results from here this particular equation x dot is nothing but del h by del lambda and what is Hamiltonian? Hamiltonian is l trans l plus lambda transpose f. So, when you talk about del h by del lambda then there is nothing but f actually ok. So, that is what you are doing here. So, x dot equal to del h by del lambda ok from here and that is nothing but f ok. So, that means x dot equal to f actually ok is nothing but state equation. Similarly, if you talk about this equation lambda dot equal to minus del h by del x what we derived just before ok. Similarly, if you take this coefficient is nothing but del h by del u equal to 0 what we already derived again actually. Similarly, the boundary condition this will come from here lambda f equal to del phi by del x f. Okay, we have not considered other generic boundary conditions and all we have consider uh, where T f is fixed actually. So, that is how it, it will end up here actually ok. All right. So, this is what the summary is uh, the we have this uh, this bunch of equation that needs to be satisfied ultimately. What is that? The first is state equation ok, the second is co state equation and remember the dimension of co state is same as x basically. And and then third is optimal control equation del s by del u equal to 0 and the fourth is boundary conditions I mean whatever associated boundary conditions actually. And remember if any of these equation is not satisfied then it is a non optimal solution it is not really an optimal solution at all actually ok. So, for an optimal control to be for a control to be an optimal control all these equations has to be satisfied simultaneously actually for the entire duration T naught to T f. All right. Now, this is the problem what we call as uh, kind of dualization and things like that because for solving an n dimensional problem we actually look for uh, differential equations in two n dimension space actually. Okay. This is n dimensional differential equation here and n dimension coming from here actually ok. But the thing is uh, this boundary condition I mean this initial uh, this differential equation is, is available along with this boundary condition and this differential equation is available along with that boundary condition. Yes. So, boundary conditions are available it is a matter of only accounting for that actually properly ok. All right. So, what you what you can see here that is what I am telling here let me just do that 
this these two conditions what you are looking for okay, these two are compatible and these two conditions are also compatible okay. all right and this equation has to be solved for our con optimal control okay if you solve this algebraic equation you will become a function of xn lambda at any point of time to get that xn lambda we have to use this differential equation set uh, along with their boundary conditions to have an idea of what is xn what is lambda at that point of time actually all right some of these comments are given here so the state equation state and co-state equations are dynamic equations and optimal control is a stationary equation obviously and the most uh, problematic or other painful part is something there we know that differential equations and boundary conditions are available that's not a problem but we simply cannot take uh, any numerical integration algebra like uh, algorithm like uh, runge kutta 4 and things like that and then start propagating it it's not possible because the boundary conditions are not given at the same time okay that's the that's the very very critical observation actually if the boundary conditions are available at the same time for all the variables then you could have simply integrated it either forward or backward that's not a problem but the point here is you have two n differential equations but n differential equation conditions initial condition i mean for boundary condition sense for n differential equations you have initial conditions conditions are given at t not for rest of the n differential equation the conditions are given at tf rather okay so that is where it leads to this difficulty of uh, something called two point boundary value problem okay so for solving that we need this uh, this iterative solution procedures mainly because of that actually okay. what is another observation you can see this boundary condition the way it is given the state equations initial condition is given that means it develops forward where the co-state the final boundary condition is given so that means this equation develops backward actually now you can integrate it backwards okay and uh, remember eventually uh, what you are talking about is lot of uh, numerical intensive algorithm iterative solutions and all that and that is why this becomes computationally kind of a very complex actually okay. they are computational intensive and you really require iterative numerical procedures numerical procedures to solve it actually okay and even if you solve it this iterative procedure okay one very intuitive thing is okay i do not have the initial conditions for lambda but let me guess initial conditions for lambda and then the initial conditions for both x and lambda will be available then i can integrate it further and at t equal to tf i will see what my integrated value of lambda is and whether it satisfy this equation or not if it doesn't satisfy i have to come back and correct it my control history in such a way that that will try to satisfy in the next iteration basically okay so that kind of ideas are something called shooting method and all we'll also talk about that in the next class actually but there are other ways of doing that as well actually okay so coming back to the point point here is we really require to solve two n differential equations and this process is called dualization actually that means you are uh, this lambda happens to be operating in the dual space also in a way and uh, you you got two n dimensional differential equations to to cut up for so this uh, you are actually landing up with the dualization of a problem actually okay. and this dualization problem is difficult because it is it leads to this two point boundary value problem and one more comment on the way is uh, the, uh, the this state equation happens to be stable most likely this co this co-state equation will ha will happen to be unstable actually okay so the just now the idea that i told that okay initially you get some lambda zero integrated further and all it is not really very good because what you are talking about for a stable system this equation is any one stable and any amount of unstable di differential equation numerical integration the error of initial condition guess will be amplified quite heavily basically okay that means uh, to a pictorial sense if you have some um, unstable differential equation if you start with this initial condition suppose it goes blows up that way then if you start a little bit differential equation it will go that way okay that means the the separation between them happens to grow quite a lot actually that means the the error value gets amplified as well basically okay. so that's the that's the problem of even numerical integration actually okay. and then there are ideas of multiple shooting and all okay do not uh, shoot it too much do not propagate it too much you break the trajectory into parts and all that when you break it again it, it has its own different own difficulties how do you assure continuity smoothness and all that Actually, those things we will discuss in numerical method procedure class anyway all these things are given here and also remember after all these difficulties suppose we are able to solve it okay ultimately you are solving it for a 
for a particular okay for we are, what you are doing here okay if you are solving it we are solving it for a, for a given initial condition only basically that means we are actually solving an open loop control strategy yes, the control k is not in closed closed loop sense basically so these are the difficulties uh, of uh, optimal control problem formulation in general problem formulation is nice but you land up with this computational difficulty uh, issues and all that so this is this uh, this problem is called uh, this so called curse of complexity actually okay so this is uh, what you are looking for is a, you, are, you are landing up with a situation you have to deal with a complex problem actually so you instead of n dimensional problem you land up with a two n dimensional problem and then the boundary conditions are split then the nature of the differential equation is opposite okay and then unless you solve it you do not get a control anyway actually it leads to lot of iterative procedure and things like that that way so this is called curse of complexity okay all right so ultimately even if you do all that and finally you lead, it leads to this open loop control solution idea actually all right on the way there is a different comment here one theorem tells that uh, if the hamiltonian h is not an explicit function of time then h has to be constant along the optimal path okay. why so because now you can tell dh by dt is nothing but del s by del t okay plus okay this variations coming through this x u and lambda so x dot transpose time this plus u dot transpose time that plus lambda dot transpose time that and all that etc okay now you can combine these two quantities okay this x x dot transpose times del s by del x okay plus this uh, this lambda dot and all that actually because see del s by del x okay del s sorry del s by del lambda is nothing but x dot okay so and you remember lambda dot times uh, lambda dot transpose x dot is nothing but x dot times lambda dot x dot x dot transpose times lambda i mean lambda dot actually okay this algebra what you are looking del s by del lambda is a, is nothing but x dot and lambda dot transpose times x dot is nothing but x dot transpose times lambda dot so if i do this algebra and substitute it back here then i can observe it here okay. then i tell okay this is nothing but my coasted equation and this is nothing but my optimal control equation and i am working on the optimal path anyway that means all these equations are satisfied once it is satisfied then ds by dt is nothing but ls by del t okay and that is equal to zero because the by definition h, the h is not an explicit function of time so any partial derivative of h with respect to t is zero that means ds by dt happens to be zero that means what does it tell you it tells us that h if h is not an explicit function of time then h has to remain constant along the optimal path okay and typically for a regulator problem and all we'll see that h is not only constant but that constant happens to be zero also basically because uh, h will become zero at t equal to infinity but h is a constant anyway okay so if it is zero at one point of time then it has to be zero everywhere actually okay so using that idea then it turns out that in general h is constant value for whatever problem is that on the optimal path as long as it is not an explicit function of time and most of the time we do have such a similar situation actually the, the state equation and all will not be explicit function of time constant parameters especially, especially time invariant systems and all when you talk about that okay so for uh, for those class of problems so h has to be constant and that can be a verification tool in numerical solution procedures also once you get a solution you can plot h versus time and have a feeling whether it is constant or not actually that can be a verification tool anyway so coming back to the general boundary boundary condition or, or transversality condition and all that uh, so this is uh, what it is uh, we can this i mean the similar ideas that we discuss in calculus of variations we can uh, we can talk here also it starts from something like this and then depending on various various cases case 1 case 2 case 3 all that you can you can derive the corresponding equations and all primarily we are interested in these two cases most of the time so one case tf has to be fixed other case tf is free and tf fixed and xf free then you, will, you from here you can see that uh, tf is fixed so this is zero So you end up with something like this. So that means lambda f is nothing but del phi by del x f. And second case, T f is free but x f is fixed. Okay, that's a kind of a hard constant formulation you can think about with free final time. Time doesn't matter, but uh, ultimately the error has to be zero. That kind of situation. Then this part has to be zero actually. That means h of T f is del phi by del x del T f rather here. Okay. So this is how you 
we would use these conditions as and when it is necessary in a particular formulation actually. Now, with all these in ideas, I mean all these in mind, especially these conditions and all, we will uh, we'll discuss this uh, some example problems again to get our ideas clear. Okay. First, we start with uh, something called a toy problem, I mean it is not really very challenging, but it gives us some clarity about how do we use this for this ideas and all. So, let us start with this, uh, this uh, x 1 dot is x 2 and x 2 dot is minus x 2 plus u. I think problem cannot be more simpler than that, it is actually a linear second order linear equation actually in okay, system dynamic sense okay. and j is nothing but this kind of thing. So, what you are looking for is at t equal to t f and t f is nothing but 2 actually that is also available at t equal to t f our state values x 1 and x 2 should remain close to 5 and 2. Okay. We are not interested in exactly meeting 5 and 2 as long as this this terms are minimized we are okay actually that means you, st you can start with this initial condition which is 0 0 okay this uh, okay you can start with this initial condition 0 0 and at t f t which is t f t goes to t f okay and my our value okay has to be something like okay if you are plotting okay, you are plotting in terms of x 1 and x 2 let us say. Okay, so at t equal to zero, it starts with zero zero. When t goes to t f, okay, let me write it properly. Okay, when t goes to t f, what happens here is that uh, uh, we are interested in taking this trajectory. I don't know how it leave all. But ultimately, this is there is a 5 2 value, this is 5 let us say, and this is uh, 2 basically. Okay. So, this point it does not have to go there, but it has to remain close to that value. Okay. So, that is uh, that is what you are looking for actually, okay. it need not go there per se, but there is a point 5 2, and this has to go develop and stay somewhere close to that, that point actually. Okay. That is the whole idea of that actually. Okay if it happens to be exactly meeting we are lucky actually, but uh, in general it is not we are not bothered about that what I mean. Actually. So, what you are doing here we have start with the Hamiltonian definition Hamiltonian is L plus lambda transpose f. So, that means L, L is nothing but this half u square plus lambda transpose f, f is f 1 and f 2, 2 are there. So, lambda 1 times f 1 which is x 2 plus lambda 2 times f 2 which is minus x 2 plus u. So, that is the definition of Hamiltonian. Now, co-state equation tells us that lambda dot is, is minus del h by del x that means lambda 1 dot is minus del h by del x 1 and lambda 2 dot is nothing but minus del h by del x 2. Okay. So, lambda 1 dot del h by del x 1 it does not contain any x 1 term. So, that is 0 and lambda 2 dot is del h by del x 2 that means uh, x 2 is here is lambda 1 okay. and then x 2 is here which is minus lambda 2 again take minus sign of that that means minus lambda 1 plus lambda 2. Okay. That is how you get I mean co-state equation. Remember state equation is already given, no need to derive it. Okay. So, this is there, lamb co-state equation is already there by this algebra and optimal control tells us that del h by del u has to be equal to 0. So, del h by del u is one term is u and second term is lambda 2. So, that means, u is nothing but minus lambda 2, just yeah, simple as that. Okay. As long as we get lambda 2, we are done actually. Okay. That means, once is lambda 2 value is available, u is nothing but minus of that. It is very simple, it looks actually, it appears very simple at this point of time. But let us see how much effort is needed to get this lambda 2. Okay. Anyway, so u is nothing but minus lambda 2, so I can substitute it here if I want to, minus x 2 minus lambda 2 I can write actually. Okay. Anyway, so boundary conditions are like this, x 1 of 0 and x 2 of 0 are 0 0. And lambda 1 of 2, we can remember the xf is free in a way, right? It is only close to that value, but it is in truly speaking, it is free. So, we can talk about uh, using the corresponding boundary condition, which tells us lambda f is nothing but del phi by del xf. So, lambda f, which is lambda 1 of 2 and lambda 2 of 2, is del phi by del xf, and what is phi here? Phi is this term, okay. So, the lambda 1 f is nothing but lambda 1 f is nothing but del phi by del x f that means, 
del 5 divided by del x 1 f. So, this is first term, this is what it is. Similarly, lambda 2 of f uh, t f is lambda 2 of 2 is nothing but that actually. Okay. Now, how do we solve this equation? That is more important now. The equa differential equations, boundary conditions, everything is available, and our main aim is to solve for lambda 2. Okay. But we cannot do that uh, in isolation because lambda 2 dot, what you see here, is also a function of lambda 1. So, lambda 1 dot has to be accounted for basically. Okay. But fortunately, in this equation, it is uh, it so happens that lambda 1 dot is 0. That means, lambda 1 is a constant value. So, that uh, kind of gives us some simplicity actually. Anyway, we, we will not go through those details, but we will consider this uh, something like a I mean z vector, z is contains uh, x and lambda together. So, z contains x 1, x 2 and lambda and lambda 2 together. Now, if you look at the differential equation, this is a linear equation and this is also a linear equation. Okay. So, I can put them together and write in the form of z dot equal to a z where a a happens to be like that actually okay All right so x1 dot is x2 so this is what you will get if you get that x1 dot is 0 times x1 plus 1 times x2 plus 0 times lambda 1 plus 0 times lambda 2 okay so that is how you get that there actually and similarly or all other things you see fit in and then you will end up with this this a matrix actually so when you have this linear differential equation of this form z dot equal to z the solution we know z of t is nothing but e to the power a t times c. So, now you use the boundary condition at t equal to 0, okay, then t equal 0 e to the power a t is identity. Okay. So, that is what you will do, then ultimately you get this uh, c basically, e to the power a t is, is i basically, right? so we will end up with c. So, c 1 and c 2 happens to be 0, 0 from the, from the very first two conditions actually, remember this is 0, 0 sort of thing. right? So, you have this conditions appearing that c 1 and it will give us that c 1 c 2 is 0. Now, what about the other thing? Other thing has to be applied at t f actually. So, when you apply a t f equal to 2, we are looking for x 1 of t f, x 2 of t f and lambda 1 of t f and lambda 2 of t f. But lambda 1 of t f is this one and lambda 2 of t f is that one. We just derive this. Okay. So, this is what we will put it here and then write this equation again. Now, it is the power a, a t f and t f is 2. So, e to the power 2 a essentially and a is nothing but that. So, you can evaluate e to the power 2 a happens to be like this actually. Okay. Now, what I mean you looking at this equation, what you are looking at? We are looking at variables as x 1 of 2 and x 2 of 2 and c 3 c 4. That means, this equation what you are having here is 4 equations with 4 unknown quantities. So, x 1 of 2, x 2 of 2 and c 3 and c 4. So, these 4 unknown quantities and 4 equation we can solve it. And while solving, we have to rearrange these equations a little bit and we have to take this free variables into one side in the vector and all that. So, that we will do and we will end up with some equations like that. So, it is nothing but a x equal to b form, you can solve it for that. Now, you get the values for x 1 of 2, x 2 of 2, c 3 and c 4 actually. So, you get the values of all that. That is where you will get the get the get the solution ultimately x 1 of t, x 2 of t, lambda 1 of t, lambda 2 of t. That is what your z vector, our z vector contain x and lambda together, right. So, we got the lambda basically in the process, lambda 2 what you are looking for we got. So, the control has to be u is equal to minus lambda 2 of t, that is what our main priority ambition was actually. Okay. But remember to get this value it is so much difficult because even though we started with a very simple looking problem and we observed that u is nothing but minus lambda 2, to get that lambda 2 we are, is not that easy a process actually it goes through a lot of algebra and then ultimately you will get it there. What about the second example little more complicated, uh, well I will not say that much complicated either, but it is more relevant to practical applications which is like double integrator problem x double dot is u. The relevance of that you can think about satellite attitude control problems without this uh, this dumping terms and all that actually. We have this uh, i omega dot is a function of uh, something of a tor torque control torque in a different axis and all that that way. So, this is uh, double integrator problems are very popular primarily because of those kind of uh, ideas. There is no aerodynamics, then there is no drag, no lift, it is just a tumbling of mass basically sort of thing. So, that is how it is uh, uh, this is double integrator problems are quite relevant in those kind of applications. But in general, it is not true. I mean, there are more complications and all, but approximately it is, is valid actually. This is the problem that we are talking. Okay, we want this double integrator system and we want to minimize this. Remember, 
final time is to minimize as well ok final time is not fixed here okay. but EF is unspecified it has to be minimum minimum time problem sort of thing you can think about where it is not really exactly minimum time but we want this TF to be minimum ok along with the condition that control has to be minimum as well so that is why this control dependency is also available I mean also part of the cost function so TF is unspecified and control variable UT is unconstrained actually that is what you are looking for ok. So, the double integrator problem happens to be like this system dynamics is the linear form A x plus B u y is ok again it not required really but somebody can think of y is my x 1 sort of thing. Actually. So, x dot is x plus V u y equal to C x and the boundary condition is x of 0 is 10 0 x of T f is 0 0 let us say this is what your 10 is the angle and 0 is the attitude velocity you can think. So, the, so the moving the, the tumbling mass is some some 10 degree deviation initially let us say and you want to bring it to 0 0 actually ok that is what the object actually. First thing first is a controllable controllability check we should not forget that if the system is not controllable you cannot do anything. So, it makes sense to quickly check quickly do a controllability check for any problem. So, we do that and then turns out that the determinant of m is minus 1 when more importantly it is not equal to 0 hence the system is controllable. When you can do that you can proceed with our optimal control equations and all. So, first thing is uh, Hamiltonian which is half of u square ok coming from this term ok L which is half of half of u square plus lambda transpose f. So, lambda transpose f is nothing but uh, ok a x plus v u ok lambda transpose f f is nothing but x dot equal to f of x u. So, x dot equal to x plus v u that is what it is here. So, h is the like that. So, state equation already we know co-state equation is lambda dot is minus del x by del x. So, it is if you if you see that minus del x by del x from here is nothing but minus a transpose lambda only this term and optimal control is del x by del u equal to 0 and del x by del u equal to 0 means del x by del u is nothing but u I mean coming from here okay, plus one more term v transpose lambda coming from here. So, u is nothing but minus r in well minus uh, r inverse in general provided you have this this r matrix here ok, but if r is identity here. So, we will not worry about that talk about u equal nothing but minus b transpose lambda and b is b is something like this b is matrix like this. So, if you substitute there then again we will end up with u equal to nothing but minus lambda 2, but again how difficult is that to get the lambda 2 let us see that. So, the cost of these equations has to be satisfied simultaneously actually ok. We go through the optimal control solution thing. So, lambda 1 dot lambda 2 dot is minus a transpose lambda. So, this is what in this form the good thing is lambda 1 dot is 0. So, lambda 1 is nothing but a constant quantity and lambda 2 dot is lam minus lambda 1. So, that is minus c 1. So, lambda 2 happens to be minus c 1 t plus c 2 from this equation. So, u is nothing but minus lambda 2. So, it is c 1 and c 2 as long as we no C1 and C2, then our control is available actually. Okay. So, we go back to the state equation now and tell okay x1 dot is x2, x2 dot is u, and u is nothing but this, and hence I solution sense what happens to here because x2 dot is available explicitly in time variable now, which is nice, nice actually. Then I can talk about x2 is integration of that, which is nothing but this kind of thing, okay. C1 t square by 2 minus C2 times t plus C3 but x 1 dot is x 2 now. So, x 1 dot is all that. So, x 1 can be integrated again and I will end up with integrating this one more time and, and hence I have it actually. So, x 1 to x 1 of t is like this and x 2 of t is like that ok. Now, what about the boundary conditions? So, we are using the we will use the boundary condition at t equal to 0. So, that turns out to be like this 10 0. Uh, and hence it uh, we we is attempt to solve I mean we got this C4 and C C3 basically. So that that is eliminated. We are left out with C1 and C2 basically. So this is like this. So how do you get there actually? Now we have to use this boundary condition for TF also. So you use TF and then this is what the result is x of TF and x2 of TF is 0, 0. That is what uh, our aim is actually. Okay. Our aim is to drive it to 0, 0, right? This is our condition actually. So, we put 0 0 here. So, this is the equation ok and what you what you observe here the equation contains 3 variables c 1, c 2 and t f, 
when the number of equation is 2 actually. So, we really need one more equation. In that even one more equation is transversal eddy condition because T f is free, we can write it that way. Del phi by del t is h of T f and you substitute all the necessary things, you will end up with some constraint like this. Okay. So, what you are looking for, what you are telling is we now have three equations and three variables. Okay. So, we there is just there is a chance to solve it. But remember, this is this is a set of equations that are non-linear now. There are terms like T f square C multiplied with C A C 1 and then C 2 T f square C 1 C 2 all sort of things are available uh, are there. So, essentially it is not that easy to solve it, but looking at this equation itself, we can think first two equations are linear in C 1 and C 2 at least. I can consider it as a equation for C 1 and C 2 which is linear. So, I, it is possible for me to write it in the form of A x plus B u sort of thing and then try to eliminate C 1 C 2 as a, as a function of T f. Then I put that some that function in T f here whatever I get C 1 and C 2 and all that and then I will end up with a huge polynomial expression for T f and all. Okay. Because everything will be a function of T f actually. Then I can find the roots of that and then get, your, get my T f and once I get my T f C 1 C 2 will be available. Okay. And ultimately otherwise somebody can always think of doing it numerical solution way taking the help of Newton Robson technique that is also possible actually. All right. So, finally, we will end up with some, some expressions like this if you do all that okay. and hence the control solution will be something like this C 1 and C 2 was, were, was our primary concern. Okay. Uh, well, this is a small mistake again. Okay. This is not U 1, this is C 1 and this is C 2. Okay. So, C 1 of T minus C 2 sort of thing. So, C 1 is like this and C 2 is like that. And T f is also available, T f is nothing but that. So, we can cal calculate that. So, we can also tell that this will not only arrest this tumbling, but it also take that much of time to arrest the tumbling. So, essentially it is an open loop control law because it is a function of purely a function of time and the application of control has to be terminated at T f. If you keep on applying this beyond T f, then there is no guarantee at all actually. Okay. There should be a mechanism of stopping the control at T f actually, yes, that is more important. Another class of problems before we wind up this uh, this particular class, uh, you can think that a function of state variables prescribed at f x prime of t f in all that that kind of thing. So, you have a function something like this x dot equal to like that j, j has to be minimized where this additional constraint is coming into picture. Okay, this is an algebraic constraint the function of states at t f equal to 0 basically. How do you handle this? This can be handled with this auxiliary condition sort of thing where you uh, we consider this uh, further I mean some sort of a Lagrange variable for Lagrange variable happening outside the integral. This this happens inside the integral because of state equation, but this because of this constant equation this gets coupled with this condition that you have okay, which happens to outside the integral. Now, you can apply your regular optimal control consider this as some sort of a phi function and whatever you have here is something like a L function actually. We do that this thing uh, what you are looking for what you are looking here is very similar to the conditions, but lambda f will not be only a function of del phi by del x, but it will also contain this okay, lambda f and you will also let I mean consider this del j bar by del nu as some sort of a side condition actually they call. So, we are we are, you have to solve both lambda as well as nu together sense actually. Okay. So, a quick example of that is orbital transfer where you talk about a rocket engine operating at some T f and things like that. So, essentially some satellite was there or some orbit was there and then it must be transferred to a different orbit okay, using the thrust force actually. Okay. So, the satellite has some thrust mechanism it can operate anyway anytime it wishes to it starts here and all the ultimate aim is to merge with this orbit actually. The dynamics are satisfied I mean equations are like this. Okay. So, and then you can talk about system dynamics being these three okay, and the boundary conditions finally, okay, initially the boundary conditions are the, the orbit one condition and the finally the boundary condition will be some sort of something like this. Okay, this u f has to be 0 ultimately, this uh, perpendicular velocity has to be 0 and tangential velocity has to be maintained actually that is your orbital velocity sort of thing. Okay. So, these conditions come as some, some additional constraint equation outside the integral actually. Okay. So, this equation if you do that and algebra and Hamiltonian all that you define and ultimately land up with this equation, this original equation, this co-state equation, optimal control and all that. And obviously, these equations cannot be solved uh, using this uh, pen and paper ideas in closed form, 
So, essentially the point here is the message here to get these values what you are looking for is control value like this, but to get these values we certainly need numerical techniques actually. So, in general practically relevant problems will typically lead to numerical solutions basically. So, we, we have to gear up towards that. The boundary conditions are also split. So, essentially what you are looking for is uh, this uh, state equation, co-state equation, optimal control equation and then boundary condition. It is a little bit complex condition. Conditions are there, I mean the equations and conditions are available just that it is not possible to solve it in closed form and hence we need numerical solutions actually. All right, so that is the message that I want to give in this class. So, we will see this numerical, numerical techniques and all in the next class actually. Thank you.